Hi, guys. This is Kelly from Hills, Deals, and Wheels Mobile Home Investing Course. And today we have a very special guest, Miss Kimberly Land in the house. Kimberly, right. how are you doing today? I'm doing well, Miss Kelly. How are you? I'm doing well. And you know what, Kimberly? Everybody knows that I, I got this fake mobile home in the back. And right. Looking at your scenery, it looked like it's fake, but by no means this, is it. So, this is real. Kimberly, tell us where you are and tell us a little bit about yourself. So I am in Alaska right now, this minute physically. That's why you see the mountains. They normally have a little bit of snow. We're not, we're almost there. The mountains down that way have some snow on them. So I'm in Alaska. I'm from the Midwest. I'm a Chicago girl. I'm a city girl. So all of this is new for me because I grew up with buildings and concrete and parks. Nothing, nothing like this. Nothing like this. Mm -hmm. And so Kimberly, why Alaska? Everybody, (laughs) everybody (laughs) always asks me that. So I'm like you, Kelly, I'm in the healthcare field, okay? I have a Master of Occupational Therapy. I am an occupational therapist. That is my job by trade, but I'm a travel therapist. So I left Chicago, went to California. I was there like a year and a half. Everything was great. Got a call from the travel company. You want to try Alaska? And I was like, that sounds like an adventure. So I said, yes, okay? Came here and just through a series of events, just kind of ended up staying. Left, went back to California for a little while, got another call, it came back, came back, and here I am. So that's how I ended up in Alaska for work. Okay, because I, I yeah. saw a video. Was it a video? Yeah, it was a video. You and some movers, and you were showing like two other African American guys. They're like, okay, we're we're out here because I didn't think it was a whole lot of no. just not. Everybody says that, first of all, they're like, you're the first person I've ever met from Alaska. And then if they get real bold, they're like, you're the only black person I've ever seen in Alaska. And I'm like, it's true. So there are not a lot of black people here. There are not a lot of brown skinned people of African descent. I should say that not not a lot of black Americans. There are Africans here, just not a lot of black Americans here. Um, A lot of people come here by way of uh, medical, like me, by way of the military, because, you know, we have um, the Air Force and the Army bases here right up the road. We might hear a plane in a minute. And then um, people come here just for opportunity. So typically when you see somebody that looks like me, there's just a lot of opportunity here. Like you can come here and the next day you can have a job. It's very easy to get work here. Very, very easy. Do you see yourself going back to Chicago or? No. Nope, nope, nope. So my next move, I won't be in Alaska for forever. My next move is actually going to be moving down south as like a permanent base. But my goal and my dream has always been to live overseas or to just be to spend a a bulk of my time overseas. And Kelly, you probably don't know this. So I'm going to give you a little trivia. I'll give you two guesses. How many countries have I visited? How many think? Just just take two guesses. How many countries do you think I've been? I don't know, five, ten, I don't know. Okay. <laughs> the 80, 87. So before yes, before the you pandemic. Like <laughs> I love to travel. Before the pandemic, that's where I spent all of my time and all of my money was I would work, 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 work. That's part of the reason why I became a travel therapist, save the money, and then I would leave and go on vacation. I've been to all the continents, including Antarctica. So I've I've been all over the world. That was my thing that I was doing before this. So I have a history of real estate investing. That was how I was getting money in addition to my job. And so then when the pandemic came along, I was kind of grounded. I was still doing real estate investing, but not here in Alaska. That's when I got into mobile home investing in Alaska. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Kim, uh, were you a realtor? At one point I was, and then I got out of being, I was a realtor and an appraiser, actually. I got out of that. It wasn't for me. I did that for a few years. Um, And then I just transitioned just into real estate investing. And so I had rentals. I was doing fix and flips um, and wait, rentals, fix and flips and creative financing. So my history is a mix of all three of those. That was what I was doing before mobile homes, which I mean, I'm still doing it now. I shouldn't say before because I have mobile homes. And I have regular real estate, and I do both. Okay. So, Kim, would you would you say you're, like, more successful at one than the other, like, single-family homes versus mobile homes, or? That's a good question. I think, I think mobile homes are simpler. So, I wouldn't, I wouldn't necessarily say I'm more successful. Man, maybe, I guess I am more successful with mobile homes, only because, for me, the trajectory happened just faster. It just happened a little bit faster, mostly because the barrier to entry with mobile homes is, is really kind of almost non-existent. Like it was so low to get in 
Whereas with real estate, I had to do a lot more just to get those those properties. Mm -hmm. So because of that, I suppose you could say I'm more successful with mobile home investing Mm -hmm. because there wasn't a lot to do to get involved. Whereas with real estate, I had to do a lot just to get, you know, my first property and then my second and then, you know, on from there. Would you say it's like more competition on the single family side versus the mobile home side? Yeah, there's definitely a lot more competition um, because it's not just single families. You know, I I was buying single families, multifamilies and commercial real estate, which, you know, was five units plus. Mm -hmm. So I had I had everything. There's definitely a lot more competition. Mm -hmm. But even though there's a lot more competition, a, a lot of people can't even compete because of money. Plain and simple. It's just money and credit are like the two large, the two biggest issues why people can't do it. My experience has been with mobile homes. It doesn't even compare. It's just, it's just a lot easier to get started, even when you don't have any money. Mm-hmm. With, with real estate, you have to be a little more creative about that. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. And so, Kim, so you were a realtor. Uh, you still have the license or you still... You know. No, that was not for, I did that for a while. I had an office, I had a partner and everything. And it's like anything else. When you do something, you learn what you like and you learn what you don't like. And then you make decisions from there on which path you want to take. So I did that for a while. And then right before the market crashed, I stopped. I didn't want to do the licensing thing anymore because it just didn't benefit me as an investor. Now, for some people, it does benefit them. For For me and my goals and what I was doing, it did not benefit me. So I didn't renew my license and I haven't had it since. And I have zero interest. I do work with, with realtors okay. because they help me, but I have no interest in any state in the United States in being um, a licensed person. I have zero interest. <laughs> so None. You, you work with realtors, but you work with realtors on the mobile home side is that is that what you're saying no actually well sometimes i do occasionally i work with realtors on my real estate side because um there was a time when i was doing i was finding all of my own tenants and so a lot of people we do this particularly women we try to do everything and so one of the things that i've been learning over the years is it's okay to delegate to 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 get delegate responsibility and to delegate tasks Mm -hmm. so with my real estate i was doing everything i was finding it (laughs) i was getting the tenants i was making sure you know the units were, were ready i was doing everything now i'm delegating things a lot more so like i use i have one realtor who loves working with Section 8 and with um, tenants. When a, a unit becomes vacant or something happens, I call her. I don't try to do all that stuff myself. I don't do anything. She does all the work and I will gladly pay her because that frees up time for me to make money doing other things. So I have a realtor for that. I have another one who brings me deals every now and again, like, hey, you know, are, are you interested? Blah, 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 blah. So everybody has like like a role. I don't do everything on my own like I used to. I, I, I'm Some things still kind of working on, but I'm working on like delegating things a lot more. So I use realtors um, in that uh, sense. Okay. And so are you licensed in uh, Alaska? No, I don't want to be licensed for nothing. (laughs) No. Well, you know, you don't have to be licensed. Okay. So um, you don't have to be licensed to sell. You don't have to be licensed to buy and you don't have to be licensed to renovate. So I do not have a license for anything. Occasionally, I'll work with a licensed person. Like if I see a deal and maybe they have it, you know, listed, or maybe if I want to list a deal, like I have mobile homes in Illinois. So I'm working with licensed people in Illinois um, just because the situation, because I'm not physically there mm-hmm. and I have a team, but I don't have a full team there. So I work with licensed people in Illinois. But in Alaska, no. I haven't worked with any licensed people. The one licensed person that I wanted to work with, he actually turned me down and that was a blessing. (laughs) He said, no, I don't really do mobile homes. He was like the mobile home king here for a long time. So he said, no, I don't do that anymore, but I will gladly help you. And so um, if I have a question or whatever, I can message him because he knows all about Alaska mobile homes and he's really, really good at it. And he doesn't do it anymore. So that just opened, I'm glad, because he was like, like I said, the king. So that just opened it up for me to be the yeah. queen. I yep. So, Kim, how do y'all close deals out there in Alaska? You know, what, what's the paperwork and the tech? Oh. You go to the DMV or is it online? or How do y'all do it out there? Let me, let me tell you something that is so interesting. Do you know they don't have mobile home taxes out here? Can you believe that? Wow. That's a brand new thing as of this year. There are no taxes. For years prior, they had taxes. My experience has been based on my research for other states and the the deals that I'm doing in the Midwest, Alaska has the highest 
some of the highest taxes, probably apart from like California. But the taxes here, what I've seen would be between $300 and $800 per year per mobile home, which as you know, for a mobile home, is just astronomical. Mm -hmm. Um, But I suppose people weren't paying it and they were having like a really hard time collecting their money. So this year they were like, yeah, we're done. No more mobile home taxes. So that's it. So if you owed up to this year, you still owe. But as of this year, there are no taxes. So we don't have that here, thankfully. And plus getting the tax information here was just a pain. So the way that um, you said, you said, how do we do deals how here? Y'all close, how do y'all close the deal? The paper okay. Deal, Super deal. simple. Mm-hmm. Title. That's it. You don't even need a bill of sale. You just need a title. If you don't have title, then you need the bill of sale. But as long as you have title, that's all that you need. You don't need anything else. Wow, that's that's it. It's, it's Alaska is really easy. Not only that, let's say, Kelly, um, I buy a deal from you. Mm-hmm. You can give me title and I can go to the DMV today and I will have title in my name today. It's wow. literally like a two, I know a two minute process. So I, it, I don't just do in Illinois. I have um, deals across the border as well in Indiana. And so this was new for me because even when you buy like a car in Illinois, um, which, you know, has a similar titling process as mobile homes, it takes like a month for you to get your title. And then it costs a lot of money just for the title transfer. The title transfer here is very reasonably priced. So when I first started mobile homes and I went and they gave me title the first day, I was like, that's it? Like, <laughs> they're like, yeah, I couldn't believe it. I was like, well, that was easy. It was, it was so easy. It was same day process. They just do it while you're standing there. And it takes like five minutes. So, so easy. So buying mobile homes here is simple. Selling mobile homes here is simple as long as you have title. Now, if you don't have title, that's a different story. But as long as you have title, it's easy. You don't need a contract because a lot of my contracts are just verbal. We just shake on it and I'll buy it right then and there. You know, I'll just exchange money for title right then and there. If it's something that needs a little bit of work, then I will actually bring my handyman contractor over with me. So I make the appointment with the seller. We go together. We do a walkthrough together. And I say, I want blah, 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 blah. He will um, write up an estimate for me later that day, sometimes on the spot. And then that helps me determine how I want to make an offer to the seller. And then at that point, the seller can accept or reject. It's, it's, It's pretty simple out here. So Kim, since we're talking about repairs, you talked about the handyman. Now, yes, I, I seen you, and you had your little hammer and everything, and I'm like, okay, is she doing this for real? I mean, because to build, <laughs> to build some stairs, I mean, that's gonna take you know a lot of effort. It was, so easy. it was, it was easy. Yeah, you, it actually was so- did, you actually did. You're not like me. You standing in the camera and they're like, hey, no. <laughs> no, it was so easy. So first, I built some stairs in Illinois, and I had help with that because that was a little harder and it was just the measurements and everything. It was just different. Um, so by the time I got here, I was a little more familiar with it. And I said, I'm gonna try this by myself. I thought it was going to take me two, three hours. It took me only one hour. Building stairs is actually not that hard if you don't need turns. Now, if you need turns, I'm not there yet, but if it's just a straight staircase, which you can typically do probably up to about five or six stairs, that's really easy to do. It's not that hard. It's really not. It was, very easy to like I can show you how to do it in like 20 minutes it's not that hard mm, okay. it's the turns then it's like I'm not there yet I, when I when I do a, something with like a landing yeah. <laughs> then I'll let you know because yeah, okay. I'll figure that out if you see yeah. me doing some stairs I'm perpetrating that's <laughs> <just> very intimidating <laughs> no I do so my first mobile home Kelly I did all the work and I wouldn't say all I would say I did about 80 percent of it myself And so that's actually how I got started because here in Alaska, you know, we have really long winters, like the winter starts September um, and it ends probably about May and they only have about six weeks of like real, real summer here. So I was bored. I was just like, you know, I'm not, I don't hunt, which is what a lot of people here do. I've gone fishing, but I'm not like so into it. That is something I want to do. I couldn't go really hiking and you, you can do that. But at the time I was like, ah. So all the stuff that people do here, I wasn't interested in. So being a city girl and being a home health occupational therapist, I'm going to see my patients. Some of them are in mobile homes and I'm seeing mobile home parks and I'm like, what is this? You know, I had never seen a mobile home in my life or so I thought. It wasn't until I went back to Illinois that I realized I was surrounded by them. I had just never noticed it. So when I started doing research and then when I saw the price point, I was like, oh, I think I can do this. And I was bored, like bored to tears. So I just bought one. 
don't do that though. I recommend don't do that. Don't do what I did. <laughs> I just jumped in. Don't do that. And I was like, I'm going to do the work myself. And that's exactly what I did. I did the kitchen flooring. Um, I patched the walls. I repaired the floors because as you know, floors in the mobile homes with moisture, they have holes in it. I got my power tools. I was cutting holes in the floor. I did that. I, I laid down the vinyl. I did the plumbing. I built a whole wall. I put in a door. I put in the studs, the insulation. I put in the door for everything. Wow. Cabinets. Like I was just learning just how to do stuff. It took me a couple of months. Um, but I learned, I put in a washer and a dryer. I built I had somebody come in because when you do washers, they don't use regular um, 110 outlets. They use 220s. This is why you do need a professional because that will kill you. So I had somebody come in, but they showed me how to do it. They helped me connect it, all that kind of stuff. Then I had to put in like the exhaust for the dryer. I didn't know how to do that. You know, you got to put the holes in, put the, the whole thing. I learned how to do the whole thing, wow. everything, <laughs> everything from start to finish. And even the stuff that I couldn't do, like that unit had, it had carpet and tile. I don't know how to do carpet and I'm not interested. So I had to find somebody to do it. So that was an experience because I couldn't find anybody who would do it. Um, just doing um, some of the exterior parts of the mobile home that, and then this was in the middle of winter. So you can only imagine just finding somebody to help is freezing here. There's snow. They have like two feet of snow. So it was an experience, but can I tell you that I had fun like every step of the way. I had, I was having just so much fun just learning how to do everything. It was yeah, so fun for me. I see your posts and everybody's like on it and all that kind of stuff. So, hey, but Kim, I think we've been in contact with each other roughly, like maybe about a year or so. A little over a year, yep. Yeah. But so, what what is the prices of, of mobile homes out there? Is it a little expensive or? I think it's expensive for what you get. Mm -hmm. And here's the catch. So, mobile homes here, you can get them at zero, because I've gotten mobile homes for free. You know what I mean? That has happened to me. There has been a mobile home recently that sold for $100,000, which is the new one. A lot of people were kind of shocked. I would say the typical move-in ready price range is about $20,000. That is the typical move-in ready price range for a three-bedroom. However, don't get excited. That three-bedroom is not going to be nice. <laughs> it is going to need a little bit of work. It's not going to be the nicest thing to move into. It's probably going to have holes in the wall, probably some in the floors. The plumbing's not going to be the best. The roof is not going to be the best. It's just going to be movement ready, but you're going to have to fix it up a little bit. So I think for what you get, I think the prices out here are high. Here's why. Because I've been wondering, like, why is this happening? Mm -hmm. When I went to the Midwest and I started looking at, at those units, those units have garages, which shocked me because that does not happen here. You don't have mobile homes with garages. They're really kept well, and they're in really good condition. They have lawns. They have concrete pads. Units here don't have concrete pads. So when they move a mobile home, it is on dirt. That is it. So I, did, I know. I didn't even know that, which is crazy because they have earthquakes here. We have earthquakes here like every day. So it's always shaking, always shaking, shaking, shaking. So what I learned was mobile homes moved here um, in the 60s and the 70s because of like the oil pipeline and all the opportunity, and they just needed housing fast. There was no housing. So there was a man and his dad, they were just moving mobile homes, moving them, moving them, moving them. They brought them up here. It was supposed to be a temporary living, like housing um, solution. That was it. But they just kept selling them and selling them and people kept moving and moving and moving. So here we are, you know, 40-ish plus years later, and people are still moving in these mobile homes, but they're not maintaining them. So when I get a title to a mobile home, the majority are in the 60s and the 70s. Can you believe that? Mobile home titles in the 60s and the 70s. And this is pre-HUD construction standards. So I've had mobile homes that still are on fuse boxes. I've had mobile homes that are on galvanized plumbing. I've had mobile mobile homes, the one that I just got uh, two days ago, the paneling is older than me. And I'm almost in my mid-40s. The paneling is older than me. Wow. So these homes are old. So you, unless you take everything out and put something new in, you're really just kind of building on top of what's already there. Mm -hmm. So I, my experience has been after doing this in multiple states, mobile home investing here, rehabbing is the hardest. It's the hardest it's going to be. Mm -hmm. And so I feel like if I can do that here, I can do it anywhere. Because when you literally have to reconstruct plumbing and electrical <laughs> and the roof, and like when you're doing all this kind of stuff, you learn a lot. You learn like a lot because you are, you're doing a lot with these mobile homes. They need, they need a lot. People are not taking care of them.
And, and so, Kim, when you when you sell it to somebody else, okay, let's just say they need a bank loan. Is there an inspection that's involved? That does not exist here because of the reason that I just told you. Yeah. You cannot get a bank loan for a mobile home here. It doesn't even exist. So you it's not to, whoever buys it has to have cash. They have to have cash. Mm -hmm. They have to borrow the money because a bank will give you a personal loan. But as you know, that requires uh, credit. Like you have to have really good credit to just right. get a, a personal loan. Or seller financing. Those are your are your options. But you cannot get, there's no such thing as a bank loan in Alaska for mobile homes. It doesn't exist. So, Kim, when you're finding these older model mobile homes, and like they, they, they really old, can, can <laughs> some of them be moved? Or what do you mean, like out of state? No, no, to, to another location. For more yeah, they can't, yeah. Being that old, they still move them? Yep, they, they should. It's against the law to... No, nope. wow. it's not against the law. And, and the reason why is because you have no other options. They're not bringing in any new mobile homes and they're not building any new mobile homes. So like we don't have dealers here. We don't have people moving homes in from other states. That does not exist. What's here is here. And that's just that's just it. So they do allow you. I actually have two moves coming up. They do allow you to move them, but you still have to get the inspection and you still have to get the permits in order to to move a home so they could deny you like it's very possible if the home is you know not stable enough but like i said the 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 most the newest mobile home that i have personally experienced is 1983 and the newest mobile home that i've heard of someone owning is 1986 i have never heard of anyone owning a home here that is newer than 86 so my homes in illinois are newer than that but they're considered old by midwest standards whereas here they that would be considered you know, new standards, but the homes here are old, 60s and 70s, all of them. So when you're talking about inspection, you're talking about when you move the mobile home to its destination, it has to be inspected like it's strapped down correctly, not that it's inspected as to what's the home. Right. The home itself has to be, has to be inspected. So they inspect it to, cause you know, moving is a very, right. It's a oh, I they harsh. The whole thing. They're just not inspecting how it was strapped down and all that good stuff. They inspecting the whole thing after you move it. Are you asking me or telling me? I'm asking you. Oh, yeah, yeah. They So, no, no. They inspect it before, and then you have to weigh it on the way. It has to be weighed. And then when it gets to its location, um, I guess I guess you can say the way they strap down here is a little different because, you know, because of the earthquakes and everything like that. So you have to have uh, that inspection and then, like, a water and electrical and a, and a plumber, like, licensed. It can't be the, the handyman. It has to be a licensed person who comes out and connects all these things. It's a process. It's a process. That's why moving homes here doesn't really happen. So what I've noticed is when people put on the market that they want their homes to be moved, it won't sell because the regular person is not going to move it. Number one, because people are lazy. They just don't want to go through the process of learning. It's a process here. So people don't want to do it. So when someone wants to move a home um, and I see it online, I'm like, it's not going to sell. <laughs> I know that that's my opportunity because they're not going to be able to sell it. There was a mobile home that needed to be moved last year. Mm -hmm. uh, I put in an offer on it. They were offended. They didn't even, they didn't even respond to my offer. They were offended by my offer. We have been texting up to that point. When I said it in my offer, they didn't respond. They wouldn't get back to me. Nothing. Do you know a year and a half later, that mm -hmm. property is still sitting there. It is still for sale with their realtor. And I'm just like, they're never going to sell that because it needs to be moved. The only person or type of person that's gonna buy that is someone like me, an investor, a regular homeowner. It's not like in other states where regular homeowners buy and move. They don't do that here. So Kim, what, what would be like, give us you know, an estimate like the average lot rent in Alaska? So the average lot rent would run you, I would say about 525. The lowest that I've seen is 465. The highest that I've seen is 565. Mm -hmm. And that gets you your water, your trash, your sewer, and depending on where you are, it might get you your cable, but I'm seeing that they're phasing that out. So it's mostly just the space rent, the water, the sewer, um, and the trash. Mm -hmm. And and how are you going about finding your, your mobile homes? You just driving for dollars? Yeah. <laughs> it's a trick. I don't, I, it's, what's interesting is in the beginning, I did a lot of marketing and I did a lot of driving for dollars and I did a lot of relationship building. And I remember feeling like I was so discouraged 
because it felt like it was moving so slowly. In hindsight, I realized it wasn't moving slowly. It was the way it was supposed to be. But, you know, in the beginning, you're all excited. <laughs> you know, you want your first deal. So I was so discouraged because I felt like, man, I'm not getting the deal. This is moving so slowly. However, what makes me different from most other people um, is that I was consistent. I just kept going, even when it felt like, you know, it wasn't going to happen. I just stayed committed to the process and I kept going. So to answer your question now, I don't do a thing. People come to me and they call me and they bring me deals. I don't have to do anything. I've got park managers calling me. I've got friends calling me. I got regular people calling me. I'm known as the mobile home girl because number one, my skin color, then I got this hair, then I'm a woman. So I stand out in a lot of ways and there's just not a lot of mobile home like investors here. Mm -hmm. So I stand out in a lot of ways. So I'm the mobile home girl. Somebody called me the trailer queen, <laughs> the trailer park queen. <laughs> I was like, whatever. I'm the mobile home girl. So people call me. I had a um, a park manager call me the other day. There was this home that I did. I posted it. I don't know if you saw, but it was two trailers. One of them was old. It, it looked like a, like a, a truck uh, container and it was there illegally and they were trying to sell it. They had evicted the person and they were trying to sell it and they couldn't get an investor to buy it. They couldn't get anybody to buy it. So she called me and I said, okay, I'm interested. But then she said, well, you need to hurry up because there's somebody else interested. Mm -hmm. I don't do fighting over stuff. So I just said, well, let me know if they don't get it. Well, they didn't get it. She kept calling me and I was like, I want to do it, but my team and I are backed up and I don't want to pay lot rent. If we could work something out, I'll buy it. She kept calling me. She worked it out. She worked it out so that I was able to get it. We worked out the lot rent situation. I, I ended up buying it for like a really fair price. Now, let me tell you, here's the thing. I didn't know how to get rid of that other trailer. It was like a whole trailer. We couldn't move it out. There was like a tree in a way and a fence, so we couldn't pull it. I, but I knew that I could do it. I just didn't know how. So I finally found a guy, and they literally took chop saws and sawzalls, and they just cut that bad boy down. It took them three days. They cut it out. When I tell you that park manager was so happy, she came to me. She was like, I knew you, I knew you were the one that would be able to do it. And in my head, I was like, <laughs> but she said, I knew you would be, she said everything. And this is just the key for anybody that's listening. She said, everything you say you're going to do, you do it. That is key. When I buy a, a property and I say that I'm going to clean it up and I'm going to do this and I'm going to keep up with you. If I say, I'm going to bring you, you know, the lot rent, I'm going to bring you the money at this time. I, I bust my behind to make sure that I do what I say I'm going to do. That's why she kept calling me because nobody else would do it right. but me. Right. So that's how I get deals that, now. That is key. That is yep. that's key. Yeah. So, so, Kim, are you doing any deals on land or all of your deals in the park? Or how Yes. So they do have quite a few deals on land here in Alaska. So remember I told you that I do regular real estate too. So, you know, the mobile homes on, on land are regular real estate. I do – um pre foreclosures. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I found this deal that was a mobile home on land as a pre foreclosure and the lady was in pre foreclosure. And I just started, you know, I found her knocked on her door. Hey, you want to sell? She's like, huh, oh, I don't know why you want this ugly house. And I was like, don't worry, I can make it work. We worked out a deal. So this is actually like, like a steal. Um, once this goes through, we're in the middle of negotiating, not negotiating, we're in the middle of working with the bank on it now because she is in pre foreclosure. Mm -hmm. So to answer your question, yes, I do do deals on land. I have um, a couple of deals that I'm in the beginning stages of working on in Illinois that are also on land, but because I am not physically there, I have a partner. So we're in the beginning stages of that now as well. But yes, I would like to do some down south, but I, I have to be mindful of not taking on too many, you know, at, at once I want to get the process down and then I can start picking up more. Mm -hmm. So on these foreclosed properties, are you taking over the loan or like a, a subject to type of deal or? That's yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. I do subject to okay. this lady, this particular one that I'm doing now here, it, it, the balance of what she owes is so low. I could really just pay it off. Like I could just pay it off and just, I mean, it's like, you can't even buy a car for what she owes. It's so low. So I'm like, but then that would be cash that I would have just sitting in that property and I don't want to refinance and pull it out. So right now I'm just focused on just paying off what she owes and then just doing like a subject to. Mm -hmm. So because I'm still negotiating with the bank, I have time to decide. But I do I do have subject to deals that I like have right now that I own that I've successfully completed. And then her deal, I'm trying to decide if I'm going to do a subject to or if I'm just going to pay it off. I'm not I'm not really sure. I have to do the math and see. 
So with the subject two deals, uh, I'm sure you have an attorney involved in that, right? Because what if uh, they off and then they don't give you the title? No, I get title immediately. I'm sorry, not title. I get deed. I get the deed immediately. I won't do the deal if I don't have a deed. So that's not a question oh, so for me. They sign it over to you. Oh, or or I'm not doing it. That's it. <laughs> it's I get the deed now. You didn't get the deed, right? Exactly. You but I don't play that. And they don't transfer it over to you. you nope. Need, I get deed it. immediately. Wow. Period. Or we're not doing the deal. Right. That's it. Right. Yeah. So, Kim, are you buying and holding or, or are you just buying and selling it flat out or, or are you renting them out? What are you doing? So real estate, I buy and hold. I don't sell real estate. I don't flip real estate. I don't do any of that. I buy and hold only. Mobile homes, I don't buy and hold. I flip only. <laughs> That's it. Yep. So mobile homes, flipping, real estate, holding. And I use mobile homes as kind of like a launch pad for real estate and to, to just have financial like freedom, just to relax. That's what mobile homes is for me. All right. Yeah. And so, Kim, let's let's get to the real stuff. You know, I was gonna ask you this question. <laughs> what is it? What is it? Your first. I mean, this is how we start talking. You posted something. It was like a bear running in the background. I was like, oh my. Oh, God. that was my first post. That was my first post. <laughs> and and, and you were cracking up laughing. I was like, girl, I ain't never seen nothing like that. I mean, I mean, I applaud you because once, this... once I see a bear, I'm out. I'm done. <laughs> Forget about that was. Investing. People are always tripping over that. That's a normal thing. You see here, we got this. Can you see that? Right. The bears crawl right up them stairs almost every day. They come right on up almost every single day. And you see I got this here. I'll be sitting there chilling. You have to be very mindful because these bears will sneak up on you <laughs> in a minute. Are they friendly or? Um, I wouldn't say they're, I don't think bears are friendly, yeah. but they're, they're, I think part of the reason why these bears are not as dangerous is just because they've been coming they come down this mountain i live on this is a mountain that we're on we're on, we're on the side of a mountain okay so they come down this mountain let me just show y'all they come here yeah like there so they kind of come down this mountain uh -huh. all the way up there and then they come on this path and they've been coming down this path for like decades i think they're just used to seeing people I really think that's just what it is. They're just used to seeing people because people have been living here for so long. Uh, so they're just kind of like, whatever. Friendly bears. And they just don't mess with me because <laughs> it's been so long. They don't really care. Because you posted the other day, you was calling one of them a name. I said, oh my God. I no, know. they don't care. Yeah. They don't care. I was sitting right here on the deck and a bear just walked right past me like, whatever. Yeah. They just, they're just used to it. I still don't mess with them. Don't make, I don't want you to think that I'm out here getting bold. I don't do that. I still don't mess with them. Uh -huh. but And I'm still very, very cautious. I don't get close close to them. Somebody said, why don't you get bear spray? I was like, I'm not trying to get close enough to even use the bear spray. Uh -huh. But I do have that. And, you know, you have, like, your pistol and your rifle. And then they have bear, be bear bells, which I have that. That's your best defense because if bears don't like humans a lot of people don't understand that they don't like humans that's why in that video and i was like hey 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 everybody's like that bear doesn't speak english the point is not for the bear to speak english it's because if they hear and see humans they're more likely to just bounce because they don't like humans so if they see you and hear you they leave that's it <laughs> that's it <laughs> Your big, what has been your biggest obstacle since you've been in the mobile home investing business? What would you say it was? My biggest obstacle has actually been help. To be honest with you, just you finding or something or yep, mm -hmm. finding good, reliable help. That has been the biggest issue. Part of that is location. What's interesting about Alaska is I have never in my life seen so many men and women who are 100% capable of building a house, fixing something, repairing something. I've never seen just a concentration of people who are just capable. People here can do anything. These are some, they can do anything here, okay? <laughs> anything, the men and the women, everybody. Uh -huh. However, a lot of people here, unfortunately, are alcoholics, uh -huh. um, drug users, and a lot of that has to do with like the, the climate, Dr alcoholics and, and drug users. And then the people who are not that, they're busy. That's it. They're just super, super busy doing, they have a business, they're doing projects, they have so many clients, you know, 
So finding help here has been like the most challenging thing. In the Midwest, um, because I already have like a team, like I kind of have what I need there because of my real estate um, holdings. Mm -hmm. So I have a team there. That part's okay. Um, I don't really think, I think the hardest part for that has just been more managing because I'm far away. And that's only because I'm new at managing mobile homes. I've been managing real estate from far away for years. That's fine. But what I've learned, what I thought was managing mobile homes would be similar. And I learned it is not, it is not similar. So that has been the most challenging thing with the Midwest homes. But I mean, everything is a learning experience. You don't come out the gate knowing what to do. So now I know <laughs> that's it. Now I know. And, and so what, what is your market? Is it three bedrooms?